Ich freue mich sehr, dass Manu Katscher jetzt bei uns ist. Viele werden ihn schon kennen, weil er mit Leuten wie Peter Gabriel und Sting gearbeitet hat, aber er hat eine ganz andere Seite und diese Seite haben wir teilweise gehört. I was just saying, I mean, a lot of people will know your name from your work with people like Sting and Peter Gabriel. Some people might be surprised by what they heard this evening for two reasons. Firstly, because it's not the kind of music they would know from what you've done before, but also because it wasn't quite the musicians who were scheduled to play in the program, at least. So perhaps you could tell us a bit about why that changed and who was on sax. So who okay. should have been on sax? Okay, the, the rhythm section was the same, and piano and bass. Uh, the saxophone is supposed to be a trick the same, which is from Norway. It's been in the band, it's been playing on the Playground album, and it's been touring with me since, uh, since a while, but he's not here tonight because he's expecting a baby. So His wife's expecting a baby. Yeah, but the, I think he's the same, in the same kind of, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, atmosphere. So he's at home, and he's with, with his wife, just in case the baby is coming any time. So when we had uh, those concerts, uh, I said to him, I think Trigger for your first child, you should be home with your wife. I think it's much better. So then he recommended Peter Wetre, which was uh, here tonight, a Norwegian guy again. And that was his first time. We just rehearsed this afternoon, and he played tonight, and he played very well. And uh, Matthias Eich, which is the trumpet player, normally with Trigver, I thought because Trigver is not here, I think we should get someone else just to have like a, you know, like a new way of going. And uh, Tomasz was playing with us a while ago for the Neighborhood Project, and I asked him, I said, yeah, I'd love to do it. And I love Tomasz because he's a great man and he's, and he's got a style. So that's why the, the lineup was a little bit different. What differences did you note? tonight, having just had the one day to rehearse, the way that it might have sounded if Trigver had actually been here? Let's say tonight, it was, of course, I was, I'm not used to play with Peter Wetre on saxophone. I'm a bit more used with Thomas, so I was aware of his playing and where he was going and where he wanted to go. So we had to have the, you know, like, ears wide open. Uh, with Trigver and Matthias, we used to play together, with, so we don't even look at each other. We know just by one note that it's going to go this way. So let's, I wouldn't say it's, it's, uh, it's like a, we used to play together, so it's kind of a, a boring after a while. Not at all. It's just like it's very comfortable, and we can sometimes take it a different way. This time tonight, we just like play the themes. They were playing the themes uh, as they were written, and... Uh, with their own style, and, uh, and that was it. Do you still do a lot of session work? And if so, what have you worked on recently? I don't do much session. I don't do much artists like rock and pop that I was doing before. I'm just mainly uh, doing my own thing, which is this quintet. I've been releasing, as I said, uh, two uh, solo albums, and plus I'm on uh, Arte doing the One Shot Not TV show. So I'm quite busy with that, and I'm not much, not much time. I'm doing some few sessions in the world, but way less than before. Working on a show like that, which is a very loose concept, presumably not a lot of retakes, probably no retakes, what happens is what happens. Has that had an influence upon the way that you work yourself outside of that show when you're working your own music? Because it can make you loosen up too. Yes, the opposite. I think I'm so loose that I put that show together <laughs> loose as well. That's the way I am. Even when I was playing rock, I remember playing with Sting and Peter Gabriel, they were saying, Mario, you got a kind of a jazz attitude, you're very loose. And I think that's what people liked about me. So then it makes sense for me to produce that show in that same vein. When you did that kind of session work, though, to what extent would people just say, do what you think is right for this piece? Or were there people that really wanted you to say, you know, this is the way we want you to do it. Can you play it just like that? I guess when I really started, like, I, of course, I, you know, I'm French and I studied in Paris doing uh, session work and touring. I guess people were asking me at the time to play a bit like Jeff Bucaro, or like, a bit like Steve Gadd. And then when I met Peter Gabriel in 86, uh, uh, I remember the, the session I started doing uh, Don't Give Up with the one with Kate Bush and then uh, In Your Eyes. And, uh, and, and it was quite difficult for me because Peter came in the, in, the, in the studio room and said, Manu, just play whatever you have in mind. And I was the first person who asked me that, you know, in my life, because most of the time these people say, could you play a little bit like you remember that Rosanna groove? Of course I know it. I'm a, you know, I'm a musician, I'm a session player, so I have to do it for a job. And that was the first person, the first artist who came to me and said, just do whatever you have in That's mind. That's weird, though, because, I mean, he's normally such a perfectionist. It can take him years and years to finish a record. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I know. Once, <laughs> but you wouldn't want to spend years and years with him in the studio. I spent months. Redoing things, so trying two songs, things. Basically, right. But let's say that's a very funny thing because we've done that so album, and then we, that was the last day after like a couple of months in the studio. And he said, Oh, I have one track. Would you mind trying it? I said, No, of course. And the taxi was coming like in a couple of hours. I said, Okay, I had my suitcase and everything ready to go to the airport. 
And uh, so Peter and Tony Levin and David Rose, Daniel Lanois was producing, everyone's in the studio. I said, oh, I got this track, I tried it before, but it doesn't sound right. Okay, let's try. And it's uh, Sledgehammer, it's two takes. And then I went into my cab and off I went. So it could take him years and all of a sudden on one track, that's it, it's magic. So even if he's a perfectionist, I think the way that I, I went into his, inside his music, maybe he was not expecting it and he was feeling very comfortable. That's what he said after a while, after spending like 15 years with him. He said, each time you're playing a tom or whatever, a groove, he wouldn't say I wouldn't play it. I would play this, but that's what I would feel about it. Let me ask you finally one other question. It relates to TV too, because I know that in France, you were in the jury of this show. Yeah, it was. Um, which here is, we have a similar thing called Deutschland sucht den Superstar. Yeah. In America, it's American Idol. In England, it's pop idol. Um, and I know that from having read about that, I've not seen you on that show, but I people was. said you were one of the hardest guys yeah, to please. Yeah, I was please. the mean one. Very bad one. Did you like anything you saw on that show in the four years that Did you were I in the like jury? Did I like anything? I'm, and, I mean, you mean like an artist? Yeah. Well, it's very interesting because some people didn't understand why I did it. Two re I mean, three reasons. If I got time, I'm going to tell you about Please. it. But the first reason was, since I'm a drummer, I got a lot of people sending me CDs and asking me what I think about it in terms of my background and experience. So I, I always listen to the CDs and answer these people. Because when I was a kid, I mean, I had like, you know, I was a fan of a lot of different artists, but you couldn't approach them. Master classes didn't exist at the time, etc., etc. So I thought it's very important when you look for answers to get a person in front of you saying, I think maybe you should go this way, forget about that, work this out, etc. That's the first reason. The second reason was uh, being half black, half white at 8.30 on TV. It's very rare. In France? Yeah, and not only in France. So I thought that's a good way to go. Not because I'm, you know, black power at all. That's not me. But I think it's good to have someone being a drummer, you know, born and raised in France, having been successful around the world, saying, you know, it doesn't matter the color, it doesn't matter where you're coming from, it's possible. But you still didn't answer the question that I asked you, which is basically, <laughs> when you were judging these people, I yeah. mean, were you pleased with the way some of them... Do you think... I mean, let me ask you this way. I've always thought these shows, why do we even need them? I mean, if someone's good at something, will they not find a way it's to, hard to get through? It's hard. I mean, the record companies uh, are suffering of the, about a lot of different uh, parameters. But anyway, kids in countryside, when they're not living in a capital like Paris or like in Germany, like, and Germany is different because you have like a few big places, which is different in France. We have like main place, which is Paris where all the record companies are. If the kid come from, you know, South or whatever, it's hard for him to sign a deal, a record deal. And so even now you got MySpace and YouTube, blah, 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 wonderful, but it's very rare that it could be, you know, getting out of the case like that. So uh, I thought it could give, give them a chance, like earning 10 years, if they're very good at it. Some of them were very, very good. And some of them were just coming to have professionals in front of them saying, what do you think of me? Do you think I should pursue? I think, I, I, I think you think I should do it again or maybe I should leave it and do something else? And plus, for me, m my own uh, emotion, when I was listening to them, like paying attention of someone singing a song that I've heard before that I know, it's hard to say in English, but what I felt was all of a sudden I couldn't judge the vocal technique. but the emotion and insensitivity really appeared to me. And I could find myself, this is very uh, psychological, being playing with him while he was singing this song. And all of a sudden I could judge him by that groove, that sense of moving, etc. And it was, it was quite interesting, plus the fact I had to tell him with his words, not with musician codes which helped me, of course, as what we do today, express what I want to express to you and to other people. Listening to you, it's obvious that you were the right person for the job because you obviously thought a lot about what you had to do. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. Manu Kache. Thank you.